Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Super Listeners Report from Ad Results Media and Edison Research. We're going to get started, and I will now hand it over to our presenters today, Marsha Williams, partner and CEO at Ad Results Media, and Tom Webster, Senior VP at Edison Research. Thank you, Laura, and thanks uh, for all of you for, uh, for showing up to this. Uh, I'm in Boston. We're having a bit of a windstorm. Marshall, you're in San Diego. I assume your weather is better than ours. It is, although it rained yesterday and the people in San Diego didn't know what to do. So uh, it's lovely today, however. Back to normal San Diego weather. Good. Yeah, no, terrible people, the Californians. <laughs> um, so... This is our third super listener study. We're very happy to have Ad Results Media uh, back as our partners on this. Uh, and really, the, the reason that we did this was to look at the heaviest podcast consumers and get their take on the state of advertising, their tolerance for advertising, um, their receptivity to messages. Um, and so what we do in the super listener study is we look at the people who are really in the top two quintiles is how we have blocked it out uh, in terms of listening. The people who uh, that basically 37% of weekly podcast consumers who say they listen to at least five hours a week of podcasts. So they, they are the ones that will have heard the, the most shows. They are the ones that will have heard the most ads. Um, and our goal here is to find out have we ruined podcasting with advertising, Marshall? Do you think, no. have we done that yet? No, no, we have not. There is, a, I've had a preview of this uh, information piece that your team has so expertly done. And I'm pleased to announce that podcasting still resonates as an amazing channel uh, to reach uh, demographic groups that are oftentimes hard to reach. Now there is a, a caution within this uh, in the fact that we probably should be careful not to oversaturate podcasting. Uh, but we'll get to that as we reach that in this information piece. Yeah, and uh, one of the things that I wanted to start with here as we, uh, as we get going with all of this is a, a little bit of breaking news. So we, um, besides uh, Super Listeners and Infinite Dial and the Podcast Consumer Tracker and, and all of the work that we do in podcasting, uh, we also provide a service for uh, media buyers and, and uh, producers called Share of Ear. And Share of Ear is the only single source measure of all audio in the US, online, offline, you name it. If it goes in your earballs, uh, we measure it with Share of Ear in a, uh, a large uh, sample size. Um, and one of the things that we learned in just the most recent quarter of Share of Ear was this. We looked at the share of time spent listening to spoken word audio amongst 13 to 24 year olds, Marshall. Uh, and I know you and I have, have, have talked about this a bit. Um, these, these percentages are not percentages of humans. They are percentages of the amount of time that the humans are listening to audio. Um, and podcasts are now more than twice in terms of the amount of time for 13 to 24 year olds uh, in terms of spoken word audio, that's, that's kind of news, right? Like that's, th this I is a think real that's, shift. That's significant news. I think what you're seeing is a pivot in the way a, a generational group is consuming information, entertainment, what, uh, news, et cetera. There was, uh, please forgive me for quoting another uh, news source this morning, but there was a Pew Research study uh, that came out this morning, uh, appropriately so, that indicated that uh, a third, 33% of the 18 to 29-year-old audio listener consumes news from podcasting, okay, one third. And so what you're seeing is a generational shift. My, my estimation is a generational shift away from the traditional means of audio, uh, and especially in the, the context of spoken word, uh, which would be talk radio per se to podcasting. Okay. It is a, a, a demographic group of individuals who have used their mobile device for all of their information needs and will continue to do so. So I think this younger demographic um, 
I know you're seeing 35 versus 16% of podcast consumption versus radio. I think you'll continue to see that uh, deviation take place, that, that chasm between consuming traditional spoken word audio on radio and podcasting. I think it'll continue to grow. And that younger demographic is critically important to brands who are trying to establish a brand loyalty, brand affinity um, uh, with that younger demographic. So as they age, they continue to be consumers of that product. So uh, this is very promising for podcasting. And I want to just remind everyone that this is 13 to 24, and these percentages are not, again, they are percentages of the amount of time that we spend listening to audio and not humans. Uh, but it's, it's very, very clear on uh, the young end that podcasting is... Uh, has really taken over um, as the most, I think, significant source of spoken word audio, at least in younger demographics. So on with the show here. Uh, as I mentioned at the outset, the uh, super listeners, as we define them, are podcast listeners. They're weekly podcast listeners that listen at least five hours a week. That puts them in the top two quintiles, basically, uh, as we track it. Right now, that's about 37%. Uh, it's an, this is an arbitrary bar, of course, that we are drawing in, uh, for the purposes of this survey. Uh, but the goal here is that these are the people who are really in-depth, really knowledgeable about the space, really spend the most time, uh, and are going to be, uh, as we've said in this space before, the canaries in a coal mine uh, for advertising and uh, the quality and quantity of advertising. So... Uh, and all of this data is weighted to the most recent infinite dial information, which, uh, which we're going to update next month at Podcast Movement Evolutions. I hope to see some of you there. So let's start with demographics. Um, so super listeners, again, we have drawn this bar at five hours a week or more, uh, are uh, slightly more male. And that's really indicative, I think, of the kind of heritage of podcasting, the the longer you have spent with the medium, the more you listen. So uh, people that are in this sample are much more likely to be kind of veteran podcast listeners. They've really made uh, podcasts a part of their life. And so they do lean a little bit more male. Um, when you look at the infinite dial data we have for people that ever listen to a podcast, it's, it's much more uh, equal, I think, between, between men and women. And the super right. and demographic- One thing ahead. about that, but one thing about that, Tom, is that demographic has actually shifted to be more female over time. Originally, podcasting yep. was 70, 30, 80, 20 male to female. So that's a nice shift. I think some of the, the specific content, uh, true crime, um, uh, some of the entertainment content has, has pivoted more towards uh, female listeners. And I think you'll continue to see that segment grow. So that's very promising. Yeah, 100%. Um, and I think as uh, more quality content gets put out there, right? I mean, that's exactly what you're suggesting. We're going to see that equilibrate uh, even more. And again, in terms of the demographics that have ever listened to a podcast, it is pretty much 50-50 at this point. Um, with super listeners, we do see that uh, 25 to 44 is really kind of the sweet spot here. There certainly uh, are healthy percentages of people in the other demographics, but uh, 25 to 44 is really that kind of core heavy user of podcasts. Uh, they're a bit whiter than the population, um, just, just a hair. And again, that continues to improve. One of the things that we have seen uh, over the last couple of years, we've done two years now of the, uh, we've done two years of the Latino podcast listener study and one year of the black podcast listener study. Uh, we saw a pretty sizable growth with Latinos in the kind of year over year from the first year of that project. So uh, we are starting to see that uh, start to become more like the population. Certainly when podcasting very first started, it was hugely male, hugely white. Um, and all of those things are really uh, equilibrating over time. Uh, one of the things that we wanted to point out, uh, which is uh, really kind of an interesting aspect of this slice of the population, because it is a big slice of the population, right? Uh, is that they are more and more likely to subscribe to things that are advertising free or at least ad Spartan. Uh, we can see here that the percentage of 
uh, super listeners that subscribe to any one of these uh, premium video services, it's it's nearly 100%, right? It's yeah, it's 94% uh, huge growth in uh, live TV streaming, uh, continual growth in things like uh, premium channels like HBO and Showtime. Uh, and of course, Netflix is, is fairly ubiquitous and uh, very likely to subscribe to premium audio channels. And so Marshall, I think the, the thing to note about this uh, significant swath of the population is that they are hard to reach, right? Like if you're well, not uh, reaching them with a podcast. Certainly through traditional media channels, linear TV, newspapers, et cetera. This consumer has elected and had the opportunity to self-select their media of choice. That's why there are such high subscription levels to CTV services or OTT, depending on your terminology, um, and also premium music channels. They want to, the great thing about podcasting is it's, it's all um, I choose. Okay, it's not served to me by somebody else. I can choose to listen to certain things. And they have uh, elected to adopt that as their primary form of entertainment, whether it be audio or video, and they're willing to pay for it. Um, so the traditional media channels, you know, the terminology used to be cord cutters. These are truly the cord cutters. These are leading the charge in terms of, all right, I don't want you to serve it to me unless I choose it. And that's a very attractive consumer. It's the, it's the future large element of uh, how people are going to get content going forward. And in fact, when we ask these super listeners, what is the most important reason that they currently have a paid subscription to, uh, in this case, we ask them about an audio listening service. What we are seeing year over year is uh, a slightly increased sensitivity to advertising. And that's, that's a fact. And I think anybody watching this uh, who is also subscribed to some kind of premium audio channel or premium video channel, that's, that is part of the calculus, right? Um, but these folks are not resistant to all ads. They are certainly resistant to bad ads. Well, bad ads as, a, <laughs> are, uh, as an absolute shouldn't, shouldn't be part of the lexicon, but they do occur. Yeah. Um, and it's just... Uh, it's important we understand that um, when we're dealing with this group, we have to serve them the right kind of ads, ads that get their attention, ads that cut through the clutter, and not just noise that they'll select around. And they'll do it in any media. They have that opportunity and ability. All right. Uh, one thing that we have noticed with the super listeners, and again, we have defined the super listener the same way the last three years in a row now. Uh, is that they are listening to more and more podcast content. So the amount of time that super listeners are spending with podcast content uh, in terms of hours per week uh, has gone up in, over an hour in the, in the past couple of years. It was just a, a skosh under uh, 10 hours a week in 2019. It's now over 11 hours per week. So these, uh, these super listeners are finding more time in their day to listen to podcasts. Uh, and... All of this kind of tied together, uh, though they are increasingly kind of falling off the grid of traditional interrupt style advertising in traditional media, they are actually more and more receptive to podcast ads. And uh, obviously, that's not universal. That's not true of every uh, conceivable ad on podcasts. Uh, but this is a number that has gone up. It's gone up year over year that uh, the super listener agrees that podcast ads are in fact the best way to reach them. And that is right. Uh, when it's done right, Marshall, that's a- Right. And also the previous slide, I did want to mention something about that. Um, this is a consumer that's become, uh, podcasting has become their entertainment, education, uh, information, uh, element of choice. Uh, that's why I think you've seen the expansion of the number of hours listening increase on the top end. Uh, people have discovered podcasting. And remember, only five or six years ago, it was relatively undiscovered. Uh, now people have just not only discovered podcasting, but they've leaned into it aggressively. And that's a really good sign. 
Yeah, um, and I want to, there's a, a, a question here. Uh, hi, Tanner. Is there a suspicion that this increase in listening has to do with the increase in remote work? It's easier to listen to a podcast on speakerphone uh, in your home office than at your corporate in-office office. office. Um, and I think that's, uh, there's an element of truth to that. Um, but it's also a habit, right? So as people uh, adopt this habit, um, it becomes part of their, it becomes part of their life, right? Uh, and actually, the percentage of the population that continues to be kind of full-time remote workers uh, is ha has has dipped a fair amount. So a lot of these things that we saw in terms of the pandemic-related impacts, uh, we really observed last year, right? But these behaviors have kind of stuck uh, with with people this year. So um, yes, I think remote work helps, uh, but the percentage of the population that are actually going to be able to continue to be full-time remote workers is, I'm not sure it's going to be uh, massively higher than it has been. Well, let's see. It's, um, you mentioned habit. I think that's exactly right. As we've developed yep. work from home habits, we've allowed ourselves to walk the dog more frequently or, or what have you. And it's given us an opportunity to embrace podcasting when if we were in a true office environment, we wouldn't have been able to do that. And so I think that's why you see that extension there in terms of uh, the amount of, of time super listeners are listening, but that habit is, it's going to be ingrained. And I think we're fortunate to see um, the, the quality of listenership and content that's out there get better over time. I'm, I'm, this, is, this is very promising. Um, one question that I wanted to field from the chat um, from uh, Tyler Moody. Hi, Tyler. Uh, if super listener time on podcasts is going up, are other things going down or is there total time listening to, uh, to something going up? Um, the thing that has really, uh, in, in terms of super listeners, it's been commercial broadcast radio that has gone down. Um, that's, uh, it, and it's, uh, super listeners are already much more active consumers of audio. They listen, uh, to a lot more audio than the average American. Uh, but it is a bit of a zero-sum game. So uh, there's absolutely been some uh, deterioration, I think, in commercial broadcast radio on the spoken word side um, for, uh, for where a lot of that audio time is going. All right. Uh, we asked people, and this is, you know, we've put out data from our podcast consumer tracker study before on this. Uh, but when you ask people where do they ever consume podcasts, you know, YouTube does uh, pop up to the top here. It doesn't mean it's uh, the number one source in terms of uh, you most often listen to podcasts, which we're, we're going to get to in a moment. Uh, but as I've mentioned a number of times uh, in my newsletter and, and from some other research that we have released, it's a great content discovery engine. So uh, YouTube does pop up at the top here, followed by Spotify, uh, and then Apple Podcasts. And again, these are uh, super listeners tend to have more time in service with podcasting. So even these kind of veteran listeners are using alternative means, I think, uh, to listen to podcasts than we saw maybe 10 years ago when uh, certainly Apple uh, dominated. Things. So, uh, uh, Tom, a little clarity on that uh, as YouTube yep. becomes a ever listened to channel. Is that people uh, in a mobile capacity uh pressing play on a podcast and, and minimizing that just to listen, or is it the AV component of yeah. podcasting on YouTube? So we have actually researched this uh, pretty extensively and it's not a, it's not a binary answer. Um, are you better off having a video component to your podcast? You, you are for engagement purposes. Um, and I would say of, of the people that are currently regular consumers of podcasts on uh, YouTube, about half of them are really focused in on the video, right? Um, so video is going to help you there. It, it does not describe 100% of the YouTube podcasting audience. Uh, the other half is a mix of people that um, don't care <laughs> uh, and really do just listen to it or uh, that, you know, minimize the tab, the browser tab, basically, whether that's mobile um, or uh, on their desktop. So, you know, it, does it help to have video? It, it does on YouTube, obviously. Uh, but the most important thing is the content. Uh, and 
uh, engagement with that content. So, and, you know, we see that with things like Pod Save America and, and some other kind of uh, YouTube friendly podcasts, um, The Breakfast Club. So we, you know, they, they tend to, to, to show up really highly. Uh, so is it, is video necessary? No, but it helps. I don't know if that answers your question, Marshall, but. No, it does. It's a, that's an important component of where does podcasting go yeah. uh, from here? Yeah, hundred um, percent. On which service do you most often listen to podcasts? Uh, and again, this is data that we have put out uh, and I'll remind everyone that this is among super listeners, the people who listen to over five hours a week. Uh, Spotify is the number one individual source here, followed by uh, YouTube and then Apple Podcasts. So again, this you know the space has changed a lot, I think, uh, over the last 10 years. Um, and a couple of interesting questions here about subscription behavior. And we've already demonstrated that super listeners are uh, extremely likely to, be, to subscribe to premium services already, right? Whether that's audio or video services. Uh, when we ask people if your favorite podcast became exclusive to a service, would you be willing to use that service? 87% said they would, which is a, a very high number. And on the one hand, you can take that to be uh, a sign that exclusive content can drive people to a platform. It's also a sign that people aren't loyal to a platform, right? Uh, because they're more than willing to try another one uh, to be able to listen to their favorite podcast. So uh, they're, they are herds of Herds of feral boars, Marshall. I've used that analogy before. Uh, the audience will trample wherever they want to trample to be able to hear the content. They will they go. They will go to wherever the food is. Right. They will go to where the food is. One hundred percent. And they're willing to pay for it as well. And this just is all a part of the, I think, robust revenue models uh, in the podcast space. There's, you know, advertising supported. I think. Uh, continues to be certainly extremely important. Uh, but for the right content, people will, in fact, pay uh, to be able to listen to the content. So again, I think the more is more gooder uh, when it comes to revenue models. Um, I mentioned before about YouTube and its importance for discovery. And you see this here in general, how do you discover podcasts most often? Um, and searching on YouTube is now number one. Uh, it, and recommendations used to be number one on this list. We've asked this question for uh, 16 years now, Marshall. I was just a boy uh, when we started asking these kinds of questions. Um, but we have been asking this question for, for quite some time. And searching on YouTube being number one on the list uh, is, is kind of newish um, with so much of podcasting being driven by word of mouth uh, recommendations, friends and family, and so on. Certainly cross-promotion. Uh, super important, as we have seen. Well, um, I think um, this demographic that is truly embracing podcasts has grown up on YouTube. And I think it's become a ubiquitous yeah. search engine for them. And so I think that's why you see that, that jump over the past two years. I think it's, uh, uh, it, it's, it's something we need to pay particular attention to going forward. Um, this is a kind of a spicy meatball, I think, in terms of the, the, the flow of this, but I loved this data point. If you started listening to an existing podcast, uh, are you going to go back and start with the very first episode? Are you going to pick and choose uh, or listen from the current episode? And, uh, you know, especially with the kind of time and service that a lot of, of the top podcasts have, right, going back well over a decade, some of them, uh, going back and starting with the first episode. Uh, 42% said that they, that they're going to do that. And I think that's indicative of the level of engagement that super listeners have with the medium that they, that they would actually seek that out. Um, we ask a number of questions about advertising. So we're going to transition into that a little bit here in the last week. Have you seen or heard advertising in any of the following places? Uh, it, podcasts by sample design is going to be number one here. Um, streaming Radio, and by that we mean the pure play streaming audio services, uh, Spotify, Pandora, Apple Music, and so on. Um, that was really the biggest gainer year over year in terms of uh, awareness of advertising. Um, and the other thing that we noticed when we asked people, um, oh, I think my screen froze here. Sorry about that. Um, we asked people 
thinking about advertising and thinking about the media that they are being uh, exposed to advertising on, uh, are the products and services that are being advertised to them relevant? Um, and for the most part, a lot of these media, I think, are, are fairly tied here. Uh, streaming radio definitely had a, had a bit of a bump here. Social media, podcasts, magazines, newspapers, uh, all of these things are growing a little bit in terms of people's perception of relevance. Uh, that growth is not um, guaranteed, right? I think that's more a function of, of these media getting better at serving contextually relevant advertising uh, to the communities that they serve. So I yeah, think uh, a complete agreeance there. A complete agreeance there. They've done a better job of being able to refine targeting in terms of their advertising approach. And so the ads contextually, as you mentioned, are much more relevant. So I think that's uh, uh, well said. Podcasting doesn't have the same level of data to support audience segmentation, but the advertisers have done a very good job of targeting uh, consumers that fit their brands. So that's why it shows up uh, almost parallel with social media, et cetera. All right. Um, we asked people if they were more willing to consider products and services after you hear about them on various media. And here's where you do see podcasts uh, pop to the fore here. I mean, statistically, it's a bit of a tie, I think, this year between podcasts, uh, magazines, newspapers, and, uh, and streaming radio. Uh, but there is at least an, an acknowledgement uh, that there is a more, there's a, there's a greater receptivity to the messages that people hear about on podcasts. Uh, and this, my favorite question year over year, relative to other types of media, are there way too many ads on each of these sources? Um, and you know, live television gets hammered a little bit here. Uh, social media now, I think AM, FM radio. Um, and podcasting is at the bottom of this. And again, these are the people that would have heard the most advertising because they are in the top kind of two quintiles of listening. So uh, these are the folks that would have heard the most ads, um, but podcasting is still at the bottom of this list. So on, on the one hand, I think we've not ruined it yet, uh, Marshall, but this, this number does grow year over year. Right. So it's- No, a, it's you're a correct. It's, it is at the bottom, uh, which, is, which is, is promising, but we do have to keep our eye on it in the context of- uh, um, we don't want to oversaturate an opt-in media with too many ads. It's just going to take uh, an individual who loves it and go, well, there's too many ads. I'll find something else. So we just need to be, this is the cautionary tale right here. We just need to be prudent about placing good quality ads in the podcast and not uh, serving three, four, five ads in sequence to a consumer who's not used to that. They'll simply go somewhere else. So we have to, this is the cautionary part of this and we have to be conscious of it. And I'm in the podcasting ad business, but I also don't want to turn it into just a, a litany of ads that are piggybacked on one another because it'll drive listeners away from good content. I don't want to do that. Well, um, and kind of to put all of this into context, again, we have pointed out that super listeners are, uh, very likely to subscribe to either advertising free or advertising Spartan services. People are getting, they're noticing it, right? Um, the percentage of super listeners year over year that say it's important to them to limit their exposure to advertising, it actually went up quite a bit in the context of a, of a sample like this. So um, though we have not seemingly yet ruined podcasting with advertising, uh, we do have to note that these are people that are uh, conscious of the number and the amount uh, and the quality of messaging that they are receiving in all of their media, uh, and they're noticing it. One thing that we asked uh, early on in this study, and, and we, we see three years of tracking here, compared to a year ago, do you think the total number of ads in the podcasts you regularly listen to has increased, stayed the same, or decreased uh, and it's it's mildly going up. It's not it's not going down. Uh, and I think we see that certainly in the biggest podcasts. I'm not sure that we see that in the uh, the really long tail, Marshall. Uh, but certainly the 
um, the top podcasts, I think the ad load has gone up a bit. Agreed. Um, and it's, it's, again, this is the cautionary part of this. We just have to be conscious of making sure we, we serve high quality ads and don't, it, again, it's, it's a medium where if we start to, uh, I love terrestrial radio, but oftentimes terrestrial radio can have four five, six ads in a stop set. And that takes you too far away from content. And uh, I don't, it's just, it's important we keep our eye on this uh, because this is the super fan. And if they feel like there's too many ads and they're being exposed to too many ads, we j- need to be careful we serve them good ads and that we, we manage their expectations. Yeah, and uh, talk about good ads. And I, I know brand safety uh, is very much in the news um, in terms of uh, the quality of the content and you know, the, the uh, potentially controversial nature of some of the content that's out there. I mean, what's, what, is the, what have you seen around brand safety and, and what's kind of the, the message there for uh, advertisers? Well, the, um, the, the, the large press piece lately is obviously the Dro- Joe Rogan issue. And Joe is, uh, and, and, and by any ranking you look at, is the largest podcast in the ecosystem. Yep. Uh, Joe had some individuals that were controversial relative to their stance on certain issues, in this case, vaccines. And so there was some fallout from that, uh, which is great. I think Joe is a little surprised that his show was getting as much press as it was just because he's, he's such an advocate for the brand and he tries to be just a, a an individual who puts out content that he thinks is interesting and we'll see what happens. But he addressed that. I thought Joe did a great job. The key to the advertising community is to ensure that they're aware of what they're getting into. Uh, we're working on a, uh, an index right now that we can quantify uh, content inside a particular podcast. And it will show things that are in brand safety spectrum uh, in terms of perhaps there's profanity, perhaps there's allusion to a political piece of content, perhaps there's allusion to, um, you know, in this case, uh, vaccines for COVID. Um, it will simply be an index that our clients can look at from a visual standpoint and go, okay, this is what I'm getting myself into. Many of our clients from a brand suitability standpoint, suitability is critical here because many of our clients are like, I'm okay with the content, even if it's spicy and it's adult comedy or what have you, I'm okay with that provided I get results. Others are more inclined to be, I'm okay with certain segments of the podcast universe, but I want to stay away from political content on either end of the spectrum. And our our system, our index is going to be able to show uh, what that contains. And I think that's important. It's not a rating per se, it's simply a visibility tool to let the um, advertiser know what that content uh, contains. And I think that's where the industry should go, which is I, you're not going to take the foul language out of some of the adult comedy podcasts, but if you're an advertiser, you just want to know it's there. And so that's, that's the p- part of our push uh, as we sit in the industry space with our advertisers. And I just want to point out for everybody tuning in that there's no foul language in this webinar. Um, Marshall and I are not, we're not going to do that to you. So this is, this is for everyone. Yeah. Wait Um, till, wait till the Q and a session. Yeah. Okay. We'll get there. Um, (laughs) so we also asked people if they had engaged in any of a number of actions, uh, subsequent to hearing an ad on a podcast. And I, and I want to, I want to point out, you know, you can look at numbers like this and they can sort of, uh, slide right by you, but these are people telling you that they have, uh, engaged in a behavior based on an ad, right? And I, I, I think a lot of us would not like to admit that advertising works, but of course it does. Um, and you know, right off the bat here, three quarters of super listeners say they have visited a company or product's website based on a podcast ad, uh, considered a new product or service, purchased a product or service at 65%, uh, used a promotional or discount code. I know you see a lot of that, Marshall, at 59%. Uh, saw a movie, read a book. Um, and at the top of this page is page two of this recommended a product or service to others. 
uh, and 42% say they've switched to a different brand or product, uh, brand of product or service that they already use. So uh, this is, again, and really the theme of this entire, I, I think, data set is that these are people that are telling you, uh, I'm trying to limit my uh, exposure to advertising. I am trying to uh, subscribe to things so I don't hear ads. And yet look at all the things that they do uh, after hearing a podcast ad. So there's an, I think there's an incredible uh, receptivity um, and relevance story here about the efficacy of podcast advertising. Right. The, pod, the podcasting space has been, uh, since its, its infancy, has been a place where um, direct-to-consumer brands have leaned in because they do get uh, connective tissue with that audience and the audience takes action. There was a New York Times article in the past two days about Squarespace um, uh, running ads on podcasting and the delivery levels, their response levels were so efficient and so good that they didn't believe them. They, yeah. were, they were skeptical of that level of performance, but the podcasting space absolutely works. It is, it, it, there are very few things that have greater connective tissue with their audience than podcasting. It is a, a tuned in attentive medium and provided the ads right and effective and, uh, and, and well done by the host, uh, which is the, the, the real meat and potatoes of podcasting. Uh, there is a tremendous level of response and whether you're a direct to consumer company or a brand looking to stay relevant with this consumer, this is a phenomenal advertising channel. Uh, just scrolling through the chat here, Julia Sweeney says this is a brand safe webinar. Um, that's, that's our goal here. Family first. Um, yeah, Tanner, the uh, Squarespace and stamps.com, the OGs of podcast advertising. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know, uh, Marshall, what you remember about the OGs of podcast advertising. Um, I know audible was a, was a big one, uh, in the early, early days, audible go daddy. Uh, but yeah, we are we're starting to see some OGs in this space. Well, I feel like I'm one of the OGs um, in this space, but our first ad was on tw in 2010. And that's when we saw the yield that that podcast advertising could, could deliver. Um, but um, you've seen brands grow up in this space yep. uh, that have embraced it early. And we're talking about brands that were like, okay, startups, we'll see what happens, that kind of thing. And they're now publicly traded enterprise based brands, ZipRecruiter, for example, um, and a few others uh, that we've worked with who have um, stamps.com is a prime example, another OG of the podcast space. And, and they've continued to see results in 10, 12 years in a space that was, oh, I've heard of podcasting five or six years ago. I might give it a try. And so there, there's still tremendous potential in this space. And it's as you can see from here, it's maturing and we need to be thoughtful about how the advertising community treats podcast. It's an aggressive space, but it can't be oversaturated with ads. Agreed. Well, uh, and again, these highly sensitive individuals to advertising are continuing to tell us that they are more likely to purchase a product based on hearing an ad on a podcast. This actually went up year over year. Um, and again, uh, I, I want to remind people that these are actually fairly remarkable admissions. I don't think any of us uh, like to admit that we are influenced by advertising, but of course we are. Um, and the majority of super listeners do in fact tell us that uh, podcast advertising does make them more likely to purchase a product. And uh, we ask a number of statements each year about podcast advertising and Really, the remarkable thing, uh, again, these are data points about advertising, which nobody likes, uh, is that year over year, these numbers keep going up. Uh, starting with this one, you believe that the hosts of podcasts you regularly listen to are actual users of the products or services mentioned on their podcast. About half of super listeners uh, agree with that. Uh, over half agree that they pay more attention to advertising on podcasts than other forms of media. Again, that has gone up uh, a fair amount really since 2019. Um, and 53% believe that their opinion of a company is more positive 
when they hear it mentioned on a podcast they regularly listen to, that has gone up nine percentage points since 2019. So uh, when it's done right, there is a halo effect. Uh, I don't think there's a natural halo effect endemic to podcast advertising, um, but when it is done right, uh, th- there is absolutely, I think, a halo effect uh, with podcast advertising. Um, and 53% agree that when price and quality are equal, they prefer to buy products from companies that advertise on or sponsor the podcast they regularly listen to. And again, uh, that is up considerably from 2019. Um, and it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. Again, taking all of the data that we've looked at into context, uh, this is a group of people. This is a swath of the population that have uh, really sequestered themselves from a lot of the traditional means of advertising, right? So they have They've found ways, largely through subscription, but certainly through all the control, convenience, and technology, uh, to control their media diet as best they can, um, to turn off things that are not relevant to them. And even in that context, the percentage of those people that say they prefer companies that advertise on the podcast that they listen to has gone up, right? So again, we haven't ruined it yet. No, and there's a there's a real advocacy advocacy here between host and listener, mm-hmm. and I think as uh, the host leans into a particular product, and and as a company, we uh, we do everything in our power to ensure that that the credibility of those ads that are done by the host is accurate, meaning they use the product, they like it, um, and it's very important that uh, that comes through relative to what. Uh, the audience hears. They are, I'd be more willing to try that because I've heard X, Y, and Z uh, say great things about it. Um, just scrolling through the chat here, and, and thanks to everyone for, for being so active. I, I wish we could get to, uh, to all of this. Um, Mike McCallan, hi, Mike. Uh, Stop listening to one of my favorite podcasts due to so many ads. They were targeted to me, but was ultimately too annoying, though I do get upset easily. Um, and I that's true about you, Mike. I know that. Um, thanks, everyone. We're going to, uh, I'll try to get to some questions here uh, as we get to the end. Um, and there's not a ton more data for us to go through here. Uh, but we did want to break down the uh, differential receptivity of the various types of podcast ads. There's personalized discussions uh, about products and sponsors by podcast hosts, which, as you can see, uh, is highest in terms of favorability here. Messages from advertisers that are read live by the podcast hosts, also uh, 50% favorability. Um, and then sponsorship messages and finally pre-recorded ads, the kind of you know, quote unquote radio uh, style ad, which is which are not ineffective. I think that's uh, the, the point to really take away from this. They are less effective, but they are not ineffective. Uh, Marshall, from, from everything that you see at ad results, uh, what's your, what's your take on the kind of uh, variety of uh, potential ways to advertise in the space and and you know what how, what do you see as working and not working and you know what uh, what what's some well, of the data that you're looking at the 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 cream of the crop if you will is the host just like this discusses the personalized discussions about products or services uh, the connective tissue with the host is 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 the the beachfront property. Um, there's a way to have a host record an ad and insert it so that it runs over specific time periods or what have you. Um, um, sponsorship message, this episode brought to you by are fine. They are not from a performance standpoint. And many of our clients are performance oriented, even as they are larger brands. But um, uh, the, the true rubber meets the road comes when the host says, this is really a wonderful product. Remember, there's a connective tissue that takes place with this uh, with the, this style of audio, people love their hosts. They they tune in. It's self selected, and yeah. when they uh, lean in to that host, they also lean into the ads the hosts do in a first person context. Uh, recorded ads are fine. They shouldn't be priced the same as the host read ads, but but there's a space for them. Yep. Um, and uh, Craig just noted there's a massive typo on this page. We're going to fix that. Um, when we ask people if they pay more attention to these various types of, uh, podcast advertising, um, you know, we, again, we do see that personalized discussions, uh, messages that are read by the podcast hosts, 
they, uh, they do better. Um, again, it does not invalidate things like pre-recorded ads. Those don't work as well. I think any, anybody in the space knows that, uh, but pre-recorded ads are not ineffective. And basically that's what the super listeners are telling us here, uh, that they do prefer those host rate ads, but not maybe to as massive a degree as, as you might've thought. Um, are they a good fit for podcasts? Again, personalized discussions about products uh, or sponsors by podcast hosts come out at the top here. Uh, and again, uh, host red ads in general do a little bit better. They are the, uh, the beachfront property. I think Marshall, as you said, I, I, I love that. Um, and when we ask people if companies that use these kinds of things uh, understand how to reach people like you, again, it's personalized host red ads that do a little bit better, uh, but not enormously better. So uh, that is a quick look at all of the data from, uh, from this year's uh, Super Listeners uh, webinar. Uh, let's see if we can, uh, let's take some questions here. Um, ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba. Uh, all right. In future studies, can you include data on the efficacy of announcer red ads versus host red ads? I think we did that. Uh, do you also push the advertisers to create new and better ads than the stuff they've been serving up on radio for decades? Talk about that, Marshall. Is that something that you have a, a, a stake in? Absolutely. Absolutely. It's um, one of the, I mentioned this earlier. Um, um, this is a self-selected medium. It's not served when you get in the car. It is your choice. And we have to be very careful not to hit this consumer over the head with multiple ads in a stop set and they can't be wrote uh you know you know music blaring people screaming because it's if it doesn't fit in the context of the particular show it'll cost tune out and remember this is a free medium people can go anywhere they want and we have to be very careful about that we we i love podcasting i've been a listener for years and obviously it it is the nature of our business but i want to maintain its greatness by ensuring that we don't put a bunch of ill-suited ads or too many ads in these shows. There's a way to monetize this space without doing so. All right, uh, going back to some of the other questions, um, uh, Amy Abrams and Bert Kleiman both asked questions about demographics, which uh, I, I, are about the same question, I think. Um, and I'll, I'll read Bert's here. Is it possible that the bigger amount of 12 to 34 listening to podcasts uh, versus radio has to do with the greater amount of targeted spoken word content available on podcasts? I think that's 100% the case. Um, Absolutely. Ubiquitous with, with uh, the space. I mean, um, you simply can't get there are certain sports stations in local markets and things like that are great to reach that, that particular audience. And that, that's a wonderful element of uh, spoken word radio, but the amount of breadth you can have in the podcast space is second to none. And that helps reach into that demographic. Yep. Uh, so we have uh, reached the end here. Um, Marshall, anything you want to say to kind of wrap up uh, this, this whole journey that we have been on here now, I think our third year of, uh, of the super listener study, which, uh, uh, you know, I, again, I'm a, I'm a massive podcast consumer myself. I don't want us to ruin things with ads. Um, I don't. I don't think we've done that yet, uh, and I, th I think what we're seeing in this data kind of proves that out. But you know, what's your what's your thirty thousand foot view on on the space and and where we're going next? Very pleased to see uh, the expansion in time spent listening, if you will, to use an industry term. A super listener has truly embraced this as a primary media source. So that's exceptional. I think that group will grow, okay? And podcasting is going to become the ubiquitous spoken word content source for a generation of people. Uh, a cautionary tale as mentioned, we do have to manage how the ads are situated in there. Uh, this has proven to be an exceptional uh, medium for delivering uh, response for direct-to-consumer clients, but also brand affinity and brand alliances uh, because there's so many places you can go that are perfect to reach certain audiences. And you can't get that in, in most other media. Um, excited about what the future holds. I think this is a robust space that's going to continue to grow, um, it, not just domestically, but internationally and in foreign languages. And so 
get get ready. I think we're still at the beginning of this. Yeah, hundred. Uh, the, the foreign language part of it, I think, is is really, uh, I think, going to explode. Um, John asks, will uh, this info and, and videos be available at a later date in the near future? Yes, if you're registered, you will you'll be sent this. Uh, AJ writes, I've bought Simply Safe due to Bill Simmons. Uh, I was going to rob your home, AJ, but now I won't. Um, so thanks for that. Um, have you looked at the impact of paid subscriptions to podcasts versus free podcasts? That's an interesting question. Um, impact in terms of advertising, I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure that we have looked at. Um, paid subscriptions are still relatively small. Yeah. Uh, they tend to be specific and very linear in terms of content, extended content, that kind of thing. Um, I, think, I think they'll probably stay where they are. Um, relative to advertising, some still contain ads. Um, Spotify, for example, still has the spoken host read ads, um, and there, there is no plans for them to move those. Um, even the, the, their, uh, they have a paywall for their, their music stream, but there is no plans to add that. So I think uh, paid subscription models for podcasting will still remain constant, relatively strong. strong. I think it will uh, expand as, a, as an advertising-based revenue source for podcasting. I think we'll continue to see that. All right, Marshall, I have one last question for you. Hit me. What's your favorite podcast? Or can you um, play I can't, It's hard. I've really, I really, I, I like Joe Rogan. I think he's an entertaining interview, depending on the host. Smartless is a favorite, um, just because interviews with people. It's, there, there's something about podcasting. When, when you're on a podcast versus a radio show or TV interview or whatever, you just let your hair down and you say things you wouldn't normally say. And that's why I like those kind of shows. So I still listen to some of the old favorites too. Bill Burr and I like comedy podcasts, so. It's, it's a broad spectrum of stuff. Well, and yours? we have not, and yours? Uh, uh, you know, I, I, I 20,000 Hertz is a, is a real favorite of mine. I'm, I'm a nut about uh, sound and uh, I, it, that's, I really do love that podcast. So 20,000 Hertz is a, is a big one. I know we're both right. going to get in trouble now for talking know, about non-clients <laughs> clients and all that. Um, but uh, this has been great, Marshall. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you for your support and for supporting this project. Uh, and thank you to everyone who attended this for giving us uh, the, the gift of your time and attention for 54 minutes, uh, give or take. And thank you. Thank you, uh, Tom. You and your team do a great job. I'll uh, we'll continue to be partners with you guys because uh, the space is going to continue to grow and get better. And so uh, I think we need to maintain a an edge on the research. So uh, thank you and your team a lot for putting such a good piece together. Yeah, thank you so much. I mean, I, I've uh, been fortunate to be able to contribute research to this space for um, 16 years now. So that's in dog years. That's a lot. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Uh, hope to see some of you on the road. Hope to see some of you maybe at uh, Podcast Movement or some other events down the uh, down the calendar. Um, and Marshall, I hope to see you soon. Yeah, I hope so as well. Look forward All to right. seeing everyone in person. Cheers. Cheers.